Magandang araw uli mga kataksosyo pang third week na natin ngayon at sana nag-enjoy kayo sa special episode natin kasama si JC at Tintin about invoicing. Aasahan nyo pa sa mga susunod na linggo, madami pa sa ating mga kataksosyo ang magbibigay ng kanilang expertise sa iba't ibang topic. And back to our regular episode for this week, ang ating pag-uusapan ay ang tungkol sa bookkeeping and its applicable regulations and codal provision. Oh, kasungot. Kamusta ang crispy pata nila Ate Ri at Kuya Gab mo? Ang sarap po, Kuya Katak Sosyo. Napaka-crispy ng crispy pata. <laughs> oh, kasungot. Diyan ka muna at tayo'y magsisimula na at mahaba-haba pa ang topic natin ngayong linggo. Okay po. Bookkeeping is one of the challenges that our SMEs owners and professional individuals are facing since most of them are not accountants. Into this topic, this will be divided into five parts. For today's first part would be an introduction to bookkeeping and its applicable regulations. What are the types of books of accounts? And towards the end, I'll be showing you a video on how to record transactions in your cash disbursement journal or CDJ and how it will be posted to your general ledger as your final entry. I will try my very best, mga kataksosyo, to explain in a layman's term ang mga accounting terminologies na hindi familiar sa inyo but will have more in-depth discussion on this sa mga susunod nating special topics na i-discuss sa atin ng ating mga katropang kataksosyo. Pag-uusapan natin ng pahapyaw maya-maya ang mga simple accounting terms na kailangan yung maintindihan sa pagbubukiping bilang isang negosyante at professional individuals. Section 71 of RA 10963 or also known as Train Law, amending Section 232 of the NRIC requires all corporations, companies, partnerships, and persons to keep and use relevant and appropriate set of bookkeeping records and whose gross annual sales of more than 3 million pesos shall have their books of accounts audited by the independent CPA and their income tax returns. When we say persons, mga kataksosyo, it includes estates and trust and individuals. Mga kataksosyo, mas antik pa sa love life ko ang pinakabiblia ng bookkeeping regulations ng BIR. It was issued last May 17, 1947 at ito pa rin ang foundation ng ating bookkeeping regulations sa ngayon. Pursuant to Revenue Memorandum Circular 29-2012, the following are the types of books of accounts that taxpayers may maintain in the following manner. First, we have an option to use manual books of accounts, then loose leaf books of accounts with PTU, and computerized books of accounts with PTU, at meron din tayong tinatawag na computerized accounting system. No? Ang ibig sabihin ng PTU mga kataksosyo is a permit to use. Pag-uusapan natin mga yan sa mga susunod na episodes natin. Focus muna tayo ngayon sa manual books of accounts na typical na ginagamit ng ating mga SMEs owners and professional individuals. Ano-ano dapat ang tandaan mga kataksosyo pag ikaw ay gagamit ng manual books of accounts? First, books of accounts shall be kept at all times in the place of business. So kung nasaan yung business mo mga kataksosyo, dapat doon nakatago or naka lagay yung books of accounts mo. Usually, kung saan yung head office, dapat andun yung books of accounts. Keeping of two or more set of, sets of records of books of accounts is prohibited. Of course, uh, hindi pinapayagan yan, mga kataksosyo. But of course, meron tayong tinatawag no, sa mga multinational firm na management reporting. Uh, Pag-uusapan din natin yan sa mga susunod na special topics natin. Third, it shall be handwritten. So, sa manual books of accounts, Hindi na allow yung copy-paste or yung isusulat or itatype mo sa computer and then you have to print it out and then paste it in the manual books of accounts. So, bawal yun mga kataksosyo. Dapat, it must be registered before the Q1 ITR deadline or the annual ITR, whichever comes first. However, in in the actual process mga kataksosyo, 
nire-require ka na ng BIR to comply for your books of account. So, dapat, upon registration of your business, kung naalala nyo, pinag-usapan na natin yan doon sa unang vlog natin, at the onset, uh, habang pinaprocess mo yung certificate of registration mo, nire-require ka na ng BIR to submit your books of accounts. Registration of new sets of manual of books of accounts until fully exhausted. Ibig sabihin nito mga katarsosyo, hindi ikaw nire-require ng BIR to submit it annually or to renew it annually. Kailangan mo lang magpa-stamp or mag-request ng panibago pag lahat ng pages ay ubus na. Newly registered TP shall present before use to the RDO or LT. That is why mga katarsosyo, during the processing of your COR, pinapakomply ka na ni BIR to submit the manual books of accounts for stamping. Subsidiary books requires registration before use. Always remember mga katarsosyo na lahat ng sets of books of accounts required by BIR requires a BIR stamping first bago mo ito magamit or otherwise you will be penalized. The BIR requires the preservation of your accounting books and its related schedules 10 years from the last filing of the return and of the taxable year. The first 5 years is to retain the hard copies and after 5 years is to store it in electronic or digital copy. This is in consonance to the audit investigation being conducted by BIR yearly. Pag-uusapan natin ang tax mapping at BIR audit affecting SMEs and professional individuals sa mga susunod nating mga episodes mga kataksosyo. For non-VAT registered persons mga kataksosyo, you are only required to maintain the following sets of manuals of books of accounts, the general ledger or GL, general journal or GJ, cash receipts journal or CRJ, Cash Disbursement Journal or CDJ For VAT registered persons mga kataksosyo You are required to maintain the following sets of manual of books of accounts Maliban sa naunang apat Ito ay ang Sales Journal at Purchase Journal Pag-uusapan natin mga kataksosyo Ang purpose of each set of manual books of accounts As we move along in our discussion Bago ko ipapakita sa inyo mga kataksosyo how transactions are recorded in your cash disbursement book or journal at sa general ledger, I will give you a simple overview of some accounting terminologies. Rules of debit and credit equals kupit. Joke lang mga kataksosyo. Huwag nyo nang alamin pa ang history ng debit and credit mga kataksosyo kung saan ito nagsimula. Ang ibig sabihin lang ng debit ay nasa kaliwa or left. Pag-credit naman ay nasa kanan or right. Ganun lang kasimple mga kataksosyo. At huwag nyo na silang i-associate pa sa plus or minus. Di sila affiliated sa isa't isa. Hindi sila magkamag-anak. Hindi sila kadugo mga kataksosyo. Mayroon din tayong tinatawag na accounts na bumubuo sa tinatawag nating chart of accounts. Ito yung isang parang storage unit na nag i store ng mga similar transactions, kunyari, sa travel expense mo. Under your travel expense, dito pumapasok ang yung ginastos na pang-taxi, meal expenses related to travel, hotel accommodations, etc., etc. And lastly, ay yung tinatawag natin na normal balance. Kada accounts mga kataksosyo ay may normal balance. Napag-uusapan natin na may kasamang isang bote ng San Miguel uh, Pil Pilsen sa mga susunod na araw. Ang mahalaga ay maintindihan nyo muna ang gamit ng Cash Disbursement Journal at General Ledger. Ito yung sample ng manual books na mabibili nyo sa mga leading bookstores, mga katakso for the ledger, may nakalagay mismo sa cover ng books na ledger. At ito naman yung sample ng BIR stamp on the first page of your books. Diyan nakalagay ang book number. At ang klase ng libro kung cash disbursement journal, cash receipts journal, etc. etc. 
at ito naman yung laman ng columnar or journals. For businesses na may mga plenty of transactions, I suggest to use or buy the 10 to 14 columnars para you have a lot of entries to record. So mga katak sosyo, this is the sample of your cash disbursement journal. Since wala akong actual copies or hard copies ng mga manual books of accounts natin, so gumawa na lang ako ng replica ng columnars or journals through Excel. Okay? So meron tayong credit, credit, debit, 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 nature of expense, and then for the EWT rate. So lahat ng debit sides natin mga katak sosyo, nandito lahat yung expense accounts natin. And then yung credit side naman natin, since this is a cash disbursement journal, it records all your cash outflows. Lahat ng perang nilabas mo, lahat ng perang binayad mo doon sa suppliers mo, sa employees mo, para sa kanilang mga salaries. So it's good to have your cash account in the first column. So, as required by the BIR, you have to properly label yung libro mo as to the year. So, your dito, lalagay mo yung check voucher number, payee. So, because it's normally we always pay through check, no? So, dyan ko ilalagay. Then, assuming January 03, we started our operation. So, through check number 001, nagbayad ako kay Marketing Enterprise for the office supplies na binili ko sa kanya for 1,000 pesos. It happens na non but registered person yung supplier natin mga katak-sosyo. That is why yung transaction nito is walang input VAT. So, sa accounting, mayroon tayong tinatawag na double entry system. Na, pag may debit, mayroong credit. Ibig sabihin, may kabangga. So, under nature of expense, ilalagay ko lang dito. Sa actual na libro natin, of course, nakabox yun. So, per box mo susulatan. But for good visual presentation, dahil Excel naman ang gamit natin, so, I can just type supplies. Since this transaction is not required to withhold any withholding tax, so just leave it blank. So meron na tayong cash na 1,000, meron tayong office supplies na 1,000 mga katak-sosyo. Uh, bakit nilive blank natin to at we jump in into column 4, later on ipapaliwanag ko, okay? Then assuming on the last day of January, we paid our monthly rental to XYZ Property Development worth 6,720. And then the 720 represents your input VAT. That is why dumiretso ako dun sa column 4 mga katak-sosyo because this column nire-reserve ko for the input VAT account para mas maganda tingnan lahat ng expense account mo after input VAT and dito na side para hindi mas magulo so I said may na akong rent expense na 6,000 pesos so this last two decimal mga katakosyo doon sa journal nyo represents your decimal points. Kaya ang pagbasa nito is 6,000, hindi 60,000 pesos. Okay? So supposedly, I will be, I will be paying no, yung supplier natin na ZXYZ Corporation ng 6,720 pesos. However, this transaction requires me to withhold 5% since is a rental income payment pursuant to Revenue Regulations 2-98 as amended.
So dahil kailangan ako mag-withhold ng 5% doon sa rent expense ko na walang VAT. So 5% ng 6,000 would be 300. That is why may naka-reserve akong isang column dyan for the expanded withholding tax. Para mas maganda tingnan sa screen, EWT payable na lang. So bago ko makalimutan, I have to provide the nature of expense. It's my monthly rent. So mga kataksosyo, supposedly 6,720 pesos ang babayaran ko kay XYZ. However, dahil mayroon akong withholding tax na 300, so mayroon akong debit-debit na rent at saka input VAT, 6,000 plus 720 minus 300 pesos, magiging 6,420 pesos na lang. Dahil bibigyan ko ng BIR Form 2307 CXYC representing yung withholding tax na binawas ko doon sa total payment. I will explain further yung concept ng withholding tax payable mga katax sosyo sa mga next sessions natin no? sa mga next videos natin. So, assuming na nagsara na ako ng transactions ko, ng libro ko nung January. So, itototal ko lang tong dalawang to. No? So, mayroon akong 7,420 at mayroon akong 300 at mayroon akong 720 At 1,000 under office supplies. So sa actual medyo madugo lang to kasi ang liliit ng mga boxes doon. So meron akong total cash na nilabas noong January 7,420 pesos. Then meron akong 300 for the AWT payable, input VAT, 720 pesos, office supplies, expense na 1,000, and rent expense na 6,000 pesos. So this is your cash disbursement journal for the month of January. So this is our sample of general ledger, mga katak sosyo. Since I have mentioned earlier, na wala tayong copy ng actual uh, hard copies ng manual books of accounts natin. So, ito yung replica na ginawa ko through Excel. So, yung GL natin is, uh, uh, ika nga, ito yung book of final entry natin. Dito natin sinusort yung mga accounts nandoon sa cash disbursement journal natin. So, yung GL natin, gumawa na ako ng, no, nag-prepare na ako ng mga accounts no, na ginamit natin sa cash disbursement journal natin. And since sa GL nyo naman, uh, nakasort naman siya per month, so sa actual books natin, you can siguro uh, give 1 to 2 or 3 pages no, for one type of accounts. No? Uh, for cash, no? uh, expanded with holding tax, depende sa laki ng transaction nyo. Anyway, per year naman yun. So, uh, siguro for 2 years, 3 years no, bago mapuno yung for one account no. So for the cash no, uh, yun ang page 1 ko, page 2 ko no, expanded with holding tax, page 3 ko input VAT, page 4 ko is office supplies, page 5 ko rent expense, page 6 ko representation expense kung meron man, page 7 would be my light and water expense, yung mga utility transactions ko. So, as required with the BIR, kailangan properly label yung libro natin. So, I have to indicate the year and then the month. So, we started our operations last January. So, ilalagay ko dito yung transaction, 
na ilalagay ko dito is galing sa cash disbursement book or journal. So yung cash, kung babalikan natin yung cash disbursement journal natin, is nasa 7,420. Mind you, dahil sa cash disbursement natin, puro tayo palabas ng pera na sa credit side natin. So sa GL natin, mga kataksosyo, ilalagay mo yung 7,400 sa credit side. So huwag kayong magkamali, kataksosyo, no? Then, next entry natin, next account natin is EWT payable, the withholding tax payable, na nasa credit side din, worth 300 pesos for the month of January. So, maglalagay tayo dito uli for 2020, January, nang galing sa cash, disbursement, uh, journal. So, since nasa credit, Yung 300, sa credit side din natin ilalagay. Ito yung normal balance uh, ng withholding tax account na sa credit side. Next transaction natin or next account natin sa cash disbursement journal natin is the input VAT which is naka-debit side amounting to 720 pesos. So, ulitin lang natin ulit, 2020, January, then cash, disbursement, journal, or books, depende sa inyo. So, yung side, nasa debit side, 720. Okay. Ang next account natin would be office supplies, nasa debit. As I mentioned earlier, lahat ng expense account natin nasa debit side. Worth 1,000 pesos na office supplies. So, date uh, 2020 for the month of January. Cash disbursement. Journal. Worth 1,000 pesos. Then, the last transaction for the month of January is our rent expense amounting to 6,000 pesos. So, dito sa page 5 yung rent expense ko. So, talagay ko January ulit. Nanggaling yung transaction sa cash disbursement book. So, debit side because it's an expense account for 6,000 pesos. So, ito yung, uh, ito yung general ledger natin. is a group of accounts. Tinaklassify natin, sinusort natin lahat ng transactions na sa cash disbursement mo, na sa cash receipts journal mo, na sa sales journal mo, sa purchase journal mo, at dito natin tinaklassify per month. So, basically, ito yung uh, laman ng general ledger mo, mga kataksosyo. So, pag mayroon kang transaction dun sa libro mo for the month of February, So, uulitin mo lang no? yung ginawa natin nung January tayo at ililipat mo lang dito sa general ledger. So, that's it mga kataksosyo and looking forward for uh, the part 2 of our video for this topic with, which will talk about uh, the cash receipts journal naman at saka general ledger.